Right on to the alignment procedures for the amplifier board. Since we change out a couple of transistors, definitely want to do this. So ground, and then we'll do, I'm going to do one channel. I'll do one side. I will do the other side, but I'm just going to show you one, one channel's alignment. So, and I'm going to have to flip this up on a side, but I want to show you where this is going to connect. So this goes from ground to pin three. Pin three is the one right down here. I can't really zoom in that closely, but on this one, it goes one, two, three. Uh, on this receiver, it's a brown wire. And what we're looking for here um, is to adjust VR1 for this channel. The other pin we're going to use to adjust is 17 over here. Uh, maybe I will do it. Maybe I'll do both. And we can just kind of see what's going on with both of them as I adjust them. Uh, so we're going pin 3 to ground, pin 17 to ground. We're going to turn VR1 and VR2 until the voltmeter goes to zero. Um, no, maybe I will do one channel because this is just for DC offset. So, no, oh, maybe I'll do both. Shit, I don't know. Oops, sorry. We have to cut that out. Turn this up on its side where it's easier to get to. So this is going to be three. This is going to be 17. These are both set to DC. Let's see where 17 is. 15, 16, 17. On mine, 17 is third from the top, moving towards the inside, and it is a white wire. So volume at minimum, dummy load applied, no volume, should read zero. I'll give it a second to calm down a little bit and see where it lands. So we're really close. So we've got 30-ish millivolts on this channel, 5-ish on that channel. I'm probably not going to touch this one because it seems like it's drifting down. This one's drifting down as well, but that one might need a little bit of help. So let's go to VR1. This one should move. Let's see. Wrong direction. Oh, these are kind of touchy. And we're looking for zero. And this is just a matter of adjusting. So you get zero, or as close to it as practical, I mean. And then what I like to do is do an initial adjustment and then let it run for, you know, 20, 30 minutes, unless the service manual tells you to let it sit for a certain amount of time, uh, then come back and check on it. This one doesn't really say you have to let it sit for any length of time, but I'll let this kind of run, see where these drift down, come back in 20 minutes and then adjust them both. But right now I'm sitting at zero, sitting at 2.3. So this is probably, probably good, but I will come back and, and uh, reevaluate and readjust these. So let's look at setting the bias adjustment now, or adjusting the bias, I should say. So for bias adjustment, service manual says, I can get that off there, get that off there. We're going to go between 1 and 2 and 18 and 19. So, and it doesn't say which one negative goes to, but so we'll go 1 and 2, and that's going to be the bottom. It's going to be the the bottom multimeter, if I can get that on there, one and two. And then this one's gonna be 18, 19, which are the top two, as it's sitting here. All right, and then we're gonna adjust three and four. So one and two, the one and two adjustment were the two white uh, variable resistors in the middle of the board, three and four, the ones on the outside. So fire this up. And here we're looking for 
20 millivolt at 10 minutes after power is switched on. So I'm sitting at 16 and 18. I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna touch those pots for another 10 minutes, but the the procedure is gonna be wait 10 minutes, adjust them to 20. Neither one of these is crazy off, so I don't anticipate any issues adjusting those at all. So I'm not gonna bore you with 10 minutes of waiting and then going and adjusting those because we're so close right now. I will do that, I will let this run for a little bit, but um, I'm gonna do that off camera. So alignment procedure, really easy on this, right? Um, I will shut it off though just to show you, and I'll come back and set that bias. But I do wanna show you what I was referring to when I talked about those variable resistors. <clears throat> right, so one and two, three and four, right, these little white round things. Sometimes those are super sketchy on um, on certain models. Uh, this is not one that I believe has an issue with those. At least I don't recall ever running into an issue with those. So, um, it's not a bad idea to replace them, but again, the purpose of this video was kind of the bare minimum in terms of uh, preventive maintenance and replacing parts. So, you know, that really kind of wraps it up for preventive maintenance on the 737. Again, I have to... Oh man, I thought this was just dust. I do have to blow this out still and kind of do the cosmetic clean and this is the one I did the lamps on and shot the, the LED comparison video on so that's in a different segment. But um, Pioneer SX737, outstanding just for the money. One of the best Pioneer receivers you can buy in my opinion talked about this before in another video there are these receivers that are really 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 for the money uh, what you get is uh, is is pretty impressive and and this is one of those that uh, you know I really think for what you get and what you pay uh, dollar per watt this is just a fantastic receiver so uh, that's gonna wrap it up for this series on preventive maintenance on the Pioneer SX 737 of course there's more I could have done there's less I could have done. I could have done an entire recap, but again, the purpose of this video was not to go in and recap this whole thing. It was just kind of a, what what should I really consider doing? Again, thermal grease on all of these uh, transistors would be appropriate. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna do them for this video, so. And I typically don't, unless I have to work on uh, troubleshooting something on the amplifier board. So, as always, if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.